So today we are discussing uh, both lecture, yeah. Yes, both lecture in the same same presentation. I will take a break in between. Uh -huh. So you can see thirty seven slides, not much. So today we are discussing uh, benign thyroid disorder that is uh, that present with uh, enlargement. Enlargement of thyroid we call as goiter. So we are discussing today both diffuse as well as nodular goiter. First, uh, a brief review of the anatomy and physiology. Here you can see the anatomy that is arterial and venous drainage. The weight of the thyroid is about 20 to 25 gram. This is important from surgical point of view. And uh, during surgery, you can assume that we cannot wait uh, thyroid gland as we are removing during surgery. We assess the weight of thyroid in terms of centimeter square. Roughly one centimeter square is equal to one gram. So if we are removing 10 centimeter square, means we are removing 10 gram of thyroid. Okay. <laughs> Arterial supply. It comes from two superior and inferior thyroid arteries. And you can see that superior thyroid is a branch of external carotid, while internal thyroid is a branch of subclavian. In contrast to arterial supply, venous drainage goes to three superior thyroid vein, middle thyroid vein, and inferior thyroid vein. Lymphatic drainage is to pre-tracheal lymph node and paratracheal lymph nodes. Physiologically, thyroid gland produce, produce two types of hormones, thyroxine and calcitonin. Thyroxine is produced by thyroid follicular cells, whereas calcitonin by parafollicular C cells. Physiology of thyroxine is that first there is trapping of iodine followed by, followed by its oxidation, then the oxidated iodine combined with tyrosine to form monoidotyrosine. Two of these combine to form diiodotyrosine, and then one mono and one di combined to form triiodotyrosine or two of the diiodo combined to form thyroxine. When we evaluate a patient for thyroid disease, we have multiple options available and ranging from the blood test to imaging techniques. It includes thyroid releasing hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, assessment of T3 and T4 both in free as well as in combined form, then radioactive iodine uptake test which is an imaging form which we simply we call as radio iodine scan, assessment of the thyroglobulin level or assessment of the antibodies which are mainly anti-TPO, anti-thyroid peroxidase antibody or anti-thyroxine binding globulin antibody. Our first baseline test is assessment of serum TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Then depending upon its very value, we assess a patient according to whether the patient is hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. Hmm. When the TSH level comes high, it indicates hypothyroidism. So we will then next do assessment of T4. Depending on the level of the T4, it can be either normal or low. If the level comes normal, it indicates subclinical hypothyroidism. And if it is low, then the hypothyroidism is confirmed. Similarly, if TSH comes low, it indicates hyperthyroidism. Then we will do again T3 and T4. If it comes normal, it indicates subclinical hyperthyroidism. And if it is high, it confirms hyperthyroidism. Now, the classification of goiter, we classify into simple goiter, toxic goiter, neoblastic goiter, or inflammatory goiter. Simple can be diffused or multinodular. In the same way, toxic can also be diffused or multinodular, or it can be a single nodule. Neoplastic can be benign or malignant and inflammatory include autoimmune thyroiditis, granulomatous thyroiditis, fibrosing thyroiditis or infective thyroiditis.
Now proceed with simple goiter. The definition of simple goiter is simple. That is, it does not involve any other pathology. Any other pathology means it does not in, consist of inflammation or cancerous changes or neoplastic changes. That is, it is an enlargement of thyroid gland which is not associated with inflammation or cancer. Causes include when the thyroid gland is unable to meet the metabolic demand. That is, when body needs more but the supply is less. It includes endemic or colloid goiter which are caused by inadequate dietary intake of iodine. Also include sporadic goiter which are caused by swallowing large amount of certain food or drugs we call as goiterogenic food. Risk factors include female sex, age over 40 years, inadequate dietary intake of iodine, living in an endemic area, ingestion of large amount of goitrogenic food or drugs, and a family history of goiter. How we can prevent it? By giving patient iodized salt. This is the simple endemic goiter area. Or limit goitrogenic foods and drugs which prevent sporadic goiter. Etiology in detail, this is due to increased TSH secretion by pituitary gland. And why TSH become increased? This is stimulated by low level of thyroid hormone. So you can see that as thyroid hormone low, TSH increases. And this, this goes on. Repeated cycle of this occur. Cause include iron deficiency in endemic areas for example, mountain ranges of Himalayas, Andes, Rocky, mountains or Alps, or failure of intestinal absorption of iodides. There may be defect in the synthesis of thyroid hormones due to enzymic deficiency within thyroid gland, like deficiency of dehalogenase and peroxidase, or patient is taking some goitrogens like vegetables of brassica family, for example, cabbage, antithyroid drugs, for example, carbimabazole or thiouracil, or taking iodide in large quantities. Pathology, how the goiter develops and what are the different stages. Understanding of this is important from management point of view. So if we detect the etiology early and we identify in the stage of diffuse goiter, that can regress by conservative or drug treatment. But if it progresses to nodular formation, nodules cannot regress. We have to detect early in the stage of diffuse stage. First, there is persistent growth stimulation which causes diffuse hyperplasia. Here, all lobules are composed of active follicles and iodine uptake is uniform. It may persist for a long time but is reversible if stimulation ceases. But later, as a result of fluctuating stimulus, a mixed pattern develops with areas of active lobule and areas of inactive lobules. Now, the active lobule become more vascular and hyperplastic until hemorrhage occur. This causes central necrosis, leaving only a surrounding rim of active follicles. Whereas, necrotic lobules join together to form nodules which are filled either with iodine-free colloid or a mass of new but inactive follicles. This process goes on and on and continuous repetition of this results in nodular goiter and most of the nodules are inactive and active follicles are present only in internodular tissue. Means thyroid hormone are not produced within the inactive nodules, but there are some areas of thyroid tissue of thyroid follicles that are present in between the nodules which are producing thyroid hormones. How patient present? 
predominantly we classify into three types of presentation presentation as a neck neck lump or presentation due to the effect of the mass imagine a mass is developing in in the neck as the mass become grower become bigger and bigger it will compress the surrounding structure and then patient develops symptoms due to pressure on, on the surrounding structure so neck lump this is an enlargement of thyroid which varies from a single small nodule to massive enlargement dyspnea or wheezing from compression of the trachea can occur dysphagia from compression of esophagus can occur and neck vein distension and dizziness when the arms are raised above the head this we call as pemberton sign now we we'll study the presentation uh, according to two classification that is diffuse and nodular in diffuse hyperplastic goiter what are the common ages in endemic goiter areas it appears in childhood but in sporadic cases it occurs at puberty and young adults when the demand for thyroid hormone is more and more common in females symptoms like swelling in the neck which appears slowly and without any pain peripheral symptoms may develop like dyspnea when a sense engorgement mild discomfort during swallowing when we examine these patient we found that there is a lump in the neck and it is according to the anatomical site of the thyroid gland and its shape is like of anatomical thyroid gland you can recall that thyroid gland consists of two lobes right and left which are joined together by an isthmus so roughly it make a shape of english letter h when thyroid gland enlarge it assume when whole of the thyroid gland enlarge it assume this h shape but if a single nodule or one lobe enlarge obviously the h shape is lost and any it can take any shape the size is variable it may be 2 to 3 times normal or more bigger sometimes it grows into the uh, chest cavity by uh, growing into the superior mediastinum surface is usually smooth but it may become bosselated if it turns into a colloid goiter the most important test for thyroid swelling is deglutition test or swallowing test and this thyroid swelling is characteristically move upward on swallowing when you ask the patient to swallow any thyroid swelling if it is thyroid swelling arising from the thyroid gland it moves upward this is the confirmatory test that a neck swelling or it arises from the thyroid gland the diffuse goiter usually feels soft and tenderness will be absent tenderness is an indication of inflammation if present it indicates some form of thyroiditis now the simple nodular goiter age in endemic areas same appear in early adult life but in sporadic cases appear later between 25 to 40 years of age and same more common in females presentation similar that is an enlarging painless lump in the neck pressure symptoms like dyspnea discomfort the swallowing strider and engorged neck veins there may be sudden enlargement and pain in the lump this is due to hemorrhage into a necrotic nodule so we have to differentiate if a patient with thyroid swelling comes with pain that whether it is due to inflammation or necrosis and hemorrhage into the nodule on examination the enlargement will confined into the anatomical site of thyroid gland shape because the nodules are asymmetrical so thyroid gland may assume any shape maybe one part of a no lobe is enlarged maybe whole of one lobe is enlarged may the maybe the nodule uh, arises from the isthmus or it may involve the whole right and left lobe or, and the isthmus as well so it can assume any shape and similarly the size is variable number nodules are usually multiple that is multi nodular goiter 
but frequently only one nodule may be palpable even though the rest of the gland is grossly diseased. Surface will be smooth but nodular. On deglutition, it will move upward. This is the conformity as I said earlier. Consistency usually form. It may become hard if there is calcification in long standing cases. Tenderness when present indicate recent hemorrhage into a nodule. What complications can develop in simple nodular goiter? Because of the mass, tracheal compression may occur, patient having dyspnea and may have respiratory blockage. Patient may develop secondary thyrotoxicosis. Simple goiter, thyroid hormone level are normal or low. But in long standing cases of nodular goiter, patient may develop hypersecretion of thyroid hormone. This is secondary. I will tell the difference later in the discussion. And still, if it is long standing like 10 or 15 years, there is a tendency to develop carcinoma. How we investigate? The same line of investigation that I pointed earlier, we use thyroid function test. We will do thyroid scan will be normal or show increased radioactive iodine uptake because whole of the thyroid gland is active. Ultrasound of the thyroid is very important. Ultrasound will show whether the enlargement is diffuse or nodular and whether the nodule is single or multiple and whether there is any hemorrhage. Hemorrhage leads to collection that is fluid. So it will also show whether the nodule is solid or it contains some fluid in the form of hemorrhage. TSH level will be high or normal and T4 level will be low or normal. Urinary excretion of iodide iodine will be low and anti-thyroid microsomal antibody will be present in the blood. Treatment. This is just a brief uh, highlight of the treatment. We are, we are not going to tell you the detail of treatment in grade 4. When, when you come in grade 6, we will give you the treatment with more detail. Hormone replacement allows recovery of the thyroid gland. But this is applicable only in the diffuse stage. In the diffuse stage, if we replace the hormone, the goiter will regress. But once the nodular stage will form, it will it cannot regress. Small doses of iodine will treat iodine deficiency. Eliminating or reducing goiter producing food or drug is indicated for sporadic goiter. A large goiter that is unresponsive to medical treatment or restricts solid and breathing may require partial removal of the gland that is subtotal thyroidectomy. What is the course and prognosis? The outcome is good with treatment. Simple goiter may disappear spontaneously or may become large and progress to a toxic nodular goiter. Occasionally, a person may develop hyperthyroidism with the nodular goiter after receiving excess iodine therapy. More frequently, hypothyroidism develops and thyroid malignancy in the long run. I will stop here and uh, happy. Within one hour, I, I will take a, a break and uh, before the break, we can discuss because this is a, a clinical topic and and we will discuss more uh, during our uh, clinical examination still uh, of this thyroid gland. I have a session with uh, of thyroid examination with you. So, uh, Two or two needs you to see. Hmm? Uh, I will call uh, your names. Let me know. Doctor, what... Doctor, someone asked in the chat. What? Someone uh, have a question in the chat. In the chat? Yes. Okay. Save it. 
how it developed thyroid toxicosis while inactive uh, nodule. Uh, there are some uh, internodular thyroid tissue. That internodular thyroid tissue will uh, compensate and uh, start secreting hormone. Or in some cases, because of unknown etiology, one of the nodule become autonomous. Usually, thyroid secretion is controlled from pituitary gland. That is TSH secretion. But uh, one of the nodules may become autonomous. Autonomous means it does not need uh, input or signal from upward. upward. So it starts secreting and generating thyroid hormone on itself. So both type of thyroid toxicosis can occur. Either the autonomous nodule or internodular thyroid tissue become active. Okay. So I will call you Abdullah Al Hadda. Abdullah Al Hadda, present? Yes. Faisal Saad. Faisal Saad. Present. Muhammad Al Harbi. Present, present, sir. Sami Shami, Shami Shanai. Abdullah Mosin, Abdul Mosin. Faisal Shamri. Faisal Shamri. Faisal Sair. Yes, Faisal Sair present. Ahmed Shivan. Ahmed Shivan. Abdul Rahman Misfar. Yes, this is present. Abdul Aziz Shamrani. Talal. He's a prison to Dr. Aziz Shamrani. I, 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 yes, I saw. Talal Abdullah. Uh, yes, Talal. Bandar Al Sultan. Yes, prison to Dr. Rashid Al Hajri. Present, Doctor. Abdullah Saleh. Yes, present, Doctor. Maat Al Tamimi. Maat Al Tamimi. Yes, yes, present. Abdullah. Okay. Abdullah Aziz Saad. Present, Doctor. Amir Saad. Present Dictor. Okay. Saif Fahad. Salman Sultan. Loy Ali. Uh, present Dictor. Maaz Abdul. Present, present. Amar Al Anzi. Present, Doctor. Nasir Saeed. Ali Yaqub. Mishari Abdullah. Mishari Abdullah. Abdurrahman Al Malki. Abdul Majid Al Hussain. Present, Doctor, present. Nasser Ibrahim. I'm present. Abdul Karim. 
Doctor, yes, I'm here, present. Ayat, Ayat Hijan. Ayat Hijan. Al-Hamdi. Uh, doctor, Doctor Dossier is busy, yeah. but uh, yes, he I doesn't know. have a mic. Okay. Okay, I have corrected. Loyal Hamdi. Abdul Rahman Ar Alzi. Abdullah Jami. Yes, Doctor. Abdullah Al Taibi. Yes, here, Doctor. I'm here. Okay. okay I, I will call the absence mark again. I will call in the absent again so that if it miss uh, call call me. Sami Shami. Sami Shame. Yes, this is me, Doctor. I didn't hear my name. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Abdul Mosin. Abdul Mosin not here. Okay. Faisal Al Shamri. Faisal Al Shamri. Faisal Al Shamri. He is speaking but not telling. Yes. Okay. Ahmad Shaban. Ahmad Shaban. Ayad Hijan Ayad Hijan Ayad Hijan absent Abdul Rahman Alanzi Abdul Rahman Alanzi Mishari Abdullah Present Okay, so any question that you want to ask? Yes, doctor, I have a question, please. Yes, yes. Uh, the meaning of subclinical hypothyroidism, that is not come the hyper, uh, hypothyroidism, is that correct or not? Below the hyper, hypothyroidism. Sub, subclinical patient have no symptoms, apart from swelling. Patient may have swelling, no other symptom. That is the level of the thyroid derangement, whether the thyroid hormone level low or high can only come when we do investigation. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. So, how much time you want for break? 10 minutes, okay? Or we start at 9 o'clock for breakfast if not taken? No, ten? Doctor, just 10 minutes, yes. Yes, thank ten, you. Ten, 10 minutes, minutes okay. is enough. Okay. 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 I am still uh, log on. I am not going off. So after 10 minutes, I will resume again. Okay, okay. Dr. Shamim, do you hear me? Yes. Um, doctor, I have a question. Uh, do hyper and hypothyroidism patients come with goiter? Yes, both can present with goiter. Uh, doctor Shamim, may you please send the slide? Uh, slide? Yes, I, uh, I, I will send. Uh, uh, please uh, uh, write here in the message uh, email of group leader. 
group little write your email نعم يا سيخ نعم نعم هلا هلا يا سيخ دكتور ذيس از ذا ايميل
Hello. Okay, so we are starting now. Can you see this uh, new slide? Yes, sir. Okay. So we will develop our discussion further on simple goiter, hyperthyroidism. It is defined as a disease associated with overactivity of thyroid gland. Three clinical types. Diffuse toxic goiter, we call it as a grave disease or toxic nodular goiter, we call it as plumber's disease or toxic nodule, where a single nodule become overactive due to unknown reason. Diffuse toxic goiter or grave disease, this is also called as primary thyrotoxicosis. Here, a vascular diffuse goiter appear at the same time as hyperthyroidism. That is, patient develop increased level of thyroid hormone as well as increase in the size of the thyroid gland at the same time. As we discussed earlier, in simple goiter, the thyroid hormone level may be normal or low initially. So, if patient has a simple goiter, simple diffuse or simple nodular goiter initially for some time and then develop hyperthyroidism. This is called a secondary thyrotoxicosis. Means increased thyroid hormone level comes second. But in diffuse toxic or primary thyrotoxicosis, both occur together. That is enlargement of thyroid gland as well as hypersecretion or increased level of thyroid hormone both occur together at the same time. This usually occurs in younger women and frequently associated with eye signs. The whole of functioning thyroid tissue is involved. Hypertrophy and hyperplasia are, are due to abnormal thyroid stimulating antibodies. Usually thyroid follicles are activated by thyroid stimulating hormone from pituitary. But here the stimulation comes from an antibody, that is thyroid stimulating antibody. Now the toxic nodular goiter, secondary thyrotoxicosis. Here a simple nodular goiter is present for a long time before developing hyperthyroidism. This usually occurs in middle age or elderly patients and very infrequently associated with eye signs. I will describe later what are eye signs. In many cases, nodules are inactive. It is the internodular thyroid tissue that is overactive. In toxic nodule, there is solitary overactive nodule, which may be a part of generalized nodularity, that is, whole of the thyroid gland is enlarged with different size of nodule, or a two toxic adenoma, that is, a single nodule which is over secreting. It is autonomous. Autonomous means there is no stimulation coming from outside. There is no TSH stimulation, there is no TSH, TSH, TSH antibody stimulation. The stimulation is self within the nodule. Because TSH secretion is suppressed by high level of circulating thyroid hormone, the normal thyroid tissue surrounding the nodule itself is hypofunctioning and inactive. Clinically, patient age, primary Thyrotoxicosis occurs most often between 15 to 45 years of age, where secondary occurs between 45 to 65 years. And as in case of simple, it is more common in females, about eight times more common in females than in males. Symptoms. The primary symptoms is same. 
as in simple goiter. But in simple goiter, thyroid hormone level is normal, so there is no endocrine symptoms. Here, because the thyroid hormone level is increased, so in addition to the neck, neck symptom and pressure symptoms, patient, you will also find the symptoms that occur due to effect of the thyroid hormone on different endocrine systems. So neck symptoms, patient will have enlarging pain, less lump in the neck, pressure symptoms, same, this dyspnea, dysphagia, striator and engorgement of neck veins. General symptoms, these two are typical of hyperthyroidism. Patient have increased appetite but weight loss as well. This characteristic is uh, uh, universal for thyroid, hyperthyroid diagnosis. When a patient comes with increased appetite but also losing weight, you can think of, strongly think of this hyperthyroidism. Patient will prefer to be in cold weather. But uh, in, in hot climate, you can assume that most of the normal person are feel better in cold. Patient will have excessive sweating. Due to effect on alimentary system, patient can have mild diarrhea. And genital tract symptoms, patient may have oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea. Cardiovascular symptoms, patient can have palpitations, shortness of breath during exertion, may feel tired. These are often the presenting symptoms of secondary thyroid toxicosis. That is, when we speak of secondary thyroid toxicosis, patient have some form of goiter before, but in addition, when, when the patient reports some other symptoms, in addition to the lump in the neck, like this cardiovascular symptom, then you can think that now the patient has, is developing secondary thyroid toxicosis. Neurological symptoms, these are predominant in primary thyroid toxicosis. Patient can have nervousness, irritability, insomnia, depression and excitement, and even mania, headache and tremors. On examination, you can find lump in the neck, as in simple goiter, but in addition, you will find endocrine signs as well there. In the neck, if the goiter is diffuse, when you place a stethoscope on the top of the lobe, you will find, you can hear a systolic growing. This is characteristic of hyperthyroidism. Other features are similar to simple diffuse goiter. In toxic nodular goiter, this is also similar. On general examination, we found that the patient is losing weight, patient may look hot and is sweating, even in a cold room. Cardiovascular signs include tachycardia. Pulse rate will be increased 90 beats per minute or more at rest, which persists during sleep. When we examine patient and uh, we are suspecting that patient is having hyperthyroidism, uh, normally due to uh, anxiety when patient visit hospital and is uh, anticipating some uh, bigger diagnosis, pulse rate is likely to increase. So uh, from management point of view, uh, the uh, counting of pulse rate is important in uh, when patient needs, when patient of goiter needs surgery. So the best to assess what is the true, sleep, uh, true pulse rate is count the pulse during sleep and depending on that patient is classified whether having mild tachycardia, moderate tachycardia or severe tachycardia. 90, 90 up to 90 is mild, 90 to 110 is moderate, above 110 is severe. Irregular pulse may be due to extracystole or atrial fibrillation or you can have capitations at lung basis and edema of ankle due to heart failure. Neurological signs include patient look worried, nervous and agitated. When you ask the patient to stretch both hands in front, you will notice a tremor, fine tremor. Similarly, when you ask the patient to protrude the tongue, the tongue will start tremoring. Dermatological signs present include increased sweating, vitiligo, pre-tibial mixed edema, 
एंड फिंगर क्लबिंग give a characteristic eye look you you can found in patient with primary heterotoxicosis these eye signs are not present in secondary there is a variety of eye signs just a, this this is just a brief i will discuss more uh, during my uh, clinical session uh, of thyroid with you how to demonstrate these uh, eye signs lid retraction lid retraction means upper lid is retracted upward and so you can see the white sclera above the cornea normally upper eyelid is fall in front of the cornea so you cannot see white sclera above the cornea but as the upper eyelid pull upward you can see white this is due to contraction of smooth muscles in the upper eyelid lid leg like This is lagging behind of upper eyelid when patient look downward, called as von Graefe's sign. Exophthalmus protruding of eyeball. At first, sclera appear below the inferior limbus, but when the condition is extreme, the eye appears to be pop out of the eyeball, and eyelids cannot shut properly. At this stage, patient may have difficulty in convergence. patient can look up without raising her eyebrow or even wrinkling of the forehead this is called as geoffroy sign corneal ulceration may develop patient may have ophthalmoplegia that is paralysis of intraocular muscles and chemosis that is edema of the cornea diagnosis we have same tools but the result will be different most cases are readily diagnosed clinically that is you will found both the neck swelling in the region of the thyroid gland as well as endocrine features thyroid function evaluation we will do tsh t4 and t3 test in over hyperthyroidism the tsh will be low and t3 t4 will be high in sub clinical hyperthyroidism tsh will be low but t3 and t4 may be normal in only t3 thyrotoxicosis this is estimated by assessing free t3 this is suspected if the clinical picture is suggestive but routine thyroid test function are within normal range and thyroid scan that is radio iodine uptake scan is essential in the diagnosis of autonomous toxic nodule fna fine needle aspiration is not indicated in cases of hyperactive nodule due to low incidence of malignancy fnc of hyperthyroid nodule can mimic follicular neoplasm so the chances of malignancy is more when the nodule is not functioning not secreting but if if it is confirmed that nodule is secreting the chance of malignancy become very very low treatment medical treatment include antithyroid drugs commonly we use carbimazole and propyl thiouracil initially 10 mg of carbimazole is given 3 to 4 times daily and there is latent interval of 7 to 14 days before any clinical improvement and once the patient become eu thyroid a maintenance dose at a lower dose is required 5 mg 2 to 3 times a day and this is required for 12 to 18 months beta blocker for example propranolol and nadolol this is valuable in secondary thyroid toxicosis iodide which reduces the vascularity of thyroid should be used as immediate preoperative preparation when the patient needs surgery surgery in diffuse toxic goiter that is when the whole thyroid gland is secreting thyroid hormone and toxic nodular goiter with overactive internodular tissue what surgery done surgery will do cure by reducing the mass of the overactive nodule 
but in autonomous toxic nodule that is when the nodule is secreting thyroid hormone in excess and in toxic nodular goiter with some overactive autonomous nodule surgery cure by removing that nodule other option is radio iodine therapy radio iodine destroy thyroid cells same as we are doing thyroidectomy the patient avoid the need for surgery and the same result is achieved but radio iodine has some drawback as well now some uh, forms of thyroiditis hashimotos a chronic thyroiditis we call also as lymphocytic thyroiditis this is the most common cause of hypothyroidism and this is due to antibody against thyroid peroxidase and thyro thyroglobulin binding globulin it commonly present in females between 30 to 50 years of age usually there is painless diffuse goiter with hypothyroidism but sometimes acute hypothyroidism occur in about 5% of patients in investigation you will found that tsh will be high and t4 will be low and you will form antibodies against tpo and tbg treatment is replacement that is give levothyroxine if patient is hypothyroid or give trihydrothyroidine for mixed edema coma surgery is required for compression or painful symptoms this is another variety of thyroiditis subacute or granulomatous or d coerven thyroiditis this is the most common cause of painful thyroiditis and it often follows upper respiratory tract infection on fnse it may show multinucleated gan cells or granulomatous change patient will go through a characteristic course of symptoms initially there will be pain and thyrotoxicosis this lasts for 3 to 6 week then patient will have a period of asymptomatic euthyroidism and still later patient have hypothyroid course this lasts for weeks to month and finally recovery occur which is complete in 95% of patient in 4 to 6 month so initially hyper then asymptomatic that normal level of thyroid hormone then patient become hypothyroid and finally recover <coughs> so in diagnosis you can expect different levels of thyroid hormone test uh, results there will be elevated esr patient may have anemia tsh will be low with elevated t is more than t3 and low antithyroid antibodies radio iodine uptake will be low treatment non steroidal anti inflammatory drug against cystic or local painful symptoms oral steroid is required in severe cases beta blocker will be required for symptoms of hypothyroidism hypnoic acid for severe symptoms So these are useful for if the patient suggesting secondary propyl thiouracil is not indicated because excess hormone result from leak not hyperfunction symptoms can reoccur requiring repeat of treatment acute thyroiditis causes include bacterial infection in 68% of cases may be due to staph aureus or streptococcal pyogenesis 15% due to fungus or 9% due to mycobacterium this may occur secondary to piriform sinus fistula pharyngeal space infections persistent thyroglossal remnant or infection of surgical wound after thyroid surgery diagnosis is made by found finding warm and enlarged thyroid fnc will reveal pus aspirating from the mass and this pus should be sent for the culture and sensitivity to select appropriate antibiotic radioactive iodine uptake will be normal 
as compared to day care when, when it is decreased. CT scan or ultrasound scan will confirm the collection of pus. Treatment is intravenous antibiotics. We can use nephcelin, tamicin, or third generation cephalosporin. And when the result of culture and sensitivity come, we can specifically give that antibiotic. We need to search for pariform fistula, which require barium solar x-rays or endoscopy. If treatment is not given promptly, it may end in high mortality, but recovery is usually complete if treatment is appropriate. Riddle thyroiditis. This is a rare disease characterized by fibrosis of the thyroid gland. Diagnosis can be made by finding thyroid antibodies, which are present in two thirds of cases. Clinically, on examination, one can find painless, woody goiter, that is, swelling in the region of the thyroid gland, which feels like you are feeling a wood. Heart swelling. Open biopsy is needed to confirm the diagnosis. And patient may have fibrosis somewhere else in the body as well, as a form of sclerosis sy syndrome. So patient in this patient, patient who have renal thyroiditis may have retroperitoneal fibrosis as well, mediastinal fibrosis, retroorbital fibro fibrosis or sclerosing cholangitis. Treatment is required for compressive symptoms. So the section is need to be done. Chemotherapy can be given in the form of tamoxifen, methotrexate, or steroid may be effective. Thyroid hormone required only if the patients have hypothyroidism. Okay, this is the end of our uh, this question. Okay. Thanks, Doctor. Stay in lockdown. I, if anybody have any question, uh, ask, and then I will take attendance. Thyroid enlargement or goiter is very important topic, not only from management point of view, but from your examination point of view. In, in examination at every level, undergraduate level or postgraduate level, thyroid case must come in examination, in any examination. So for your MBBS and if some of you want to go in surgery, this grabs of this thyroid is very important. Okay, uh, before taking attendance, uh, I, I have uh, uh, your afternoon session as well, uh, TBL intestinal obstruction. Uh, I will take in the same room, uh, uh, yeah, this room, uh, afternoon at one o'clock. And uh, the reading material is already loaded in the uh, surgery one lecture section week two. Uh, this is a chapter from Bailey and Love. And if you have book, uh, read from the Bellion Love book. If not, uh, download that and read. I, I like all of you to come for a discussion after reading this uh, uh, intestinal obstruction so that you can have useful discussion. <laughs> okay, and now I'm calling. Abdul Rahman Miswar. Yes, Doctor. Okay. Abdul Aziz Al Shamarani. Abdul Aziz Shamarani. Okay. 
طلال عبد الله يس طلال بندر عبد السلطان يس دكتور يس يس دكتور دكتور عبد العزيز الشمراني از رايتنج داون ان ذا تشات سو يو كان سي لو عبد العزيز عبد العزيز الشمراني اوكي دكتور يس اوكي اي رشيد الهجري رشيد الهجري يس دكتور اوكي عبد الله سالم يس دكتور بريزنت ماذا التميمي ماذا التميمي يس بريزنت بريزنت دكتور اوكي عبد العزيز سعد بريزنت بريزنت دكتور امير سعد Yes, I need to Saif Fahad. Present, Doctor. Present. Salman Sultan. Salman Sultan. Salman Sultan. Loy Al Shamrani. Uh, present, Doctor. Moaz Al Wahim. Present, Doctor. Present. <coughs> Amar Al. Yes, Doctor. Present. Nasir Said. Nasir Said. ناصر سعيد ناصر اذا المايك ما يشتغل اكتب دكتور هيز ريو كان اكتب اوكي علي ابو بشاري عبد الله بريزنت عبد الرحمن المالكي Some of you are writing something. Write down in the chat. Abdurrahman Malki. Abdurrahman and Nasr both are. Yes, I saw Abdurrahman. I saw Abdurrahman. Abdul Majid. Present, Doctor. Present. Nasir Ibrahim. Present. Abdul Karim. Yes, Doctor. Present. Ayat Hijan. Present. Loy Al Hamdi. Loy Al Hamdi. He is writing for down the chat. Okay. Abdul Rahman Adal. Yes, Doctor. Abdullah Yam. Yes, Doctor. Abdullah Al Utabi. Abdullah Al Utabi. Abdullah Al Haddad. Present, sir. Present. Faisal Saad. Yes, Doctor. Present. Mohammad Al Harbi. Present, present, Doctor. Sami Shame. Present, Doctor. Abdul Mohsen. Faisal Al Shamri. 
प्रेजेंट दक्षर फैसल साहेब यस प्रेजेंट दक्षर अहमद शेबान अहमद शेबान यस ही इज राइटिंग इन द चैट प्रेजेंट ओके I will uh, call again the absence. Doctor, doctor, uh, according to Abdullah Tebi, he, ha- he lost the connection. Okay, he's with uh, me attending the class. Doctor, I am uh, Abdullah Tebi. I was. Uh, I am. I am uh, calling the absence again. Salman Sultan. Salman Sultan. Salman Sultan absent. Abdullah Al Tebi. موجود اوكي اند عبد الموسين دكتور Okay. So I will see you again at one o'clock in the same room.